Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, I am taking some thrifted items. One of the comments I get every once in a while is, why are you repainting that? That's already black. Why are you repainting that? That's already white. Those are always the colors that you already paint. Well, this is a video on I gathered up some black items that I had from thrift hauls and I thought I would share with you why it is that I repaint them. You know, I don't want to, I'm not that type of flipper. I don't buy something and throw, buy it for one price and then slap a price tag on it, put it in my booth and call it my own. I don't do that. I, you know, I have a tech, we have a technique of that we like and we have a painting style that we like and that's what we sell. So when you come to our booth, you know, you know you're gonna get white distressed, you know you're gonna get black distressed with the Waverly Wax. And so this is why I'm just gonna do a little bit of a close up. I, like I said, I gathered some of the black items up and to show you what it is and the difference between just taking a thrifted item and putting a price tag on it and reselling or taking a thrifted item and redoing it and then putting a price tag on it, you know. So this is just what the process, so this is kind of a mismatch grouping. And yes, my cat is on my lap, you know, as soon as you sit down, cats are like, ooh, lap. So, so this is the process of me taking a few of these black items and getting them ready to resell in the ginger chick style that we like. So here is the collection of black items that I grabbed from my thrift hauls. You know, they all are black, but they all are different materials and they all are painted differently. So I will go through the process of how I get these ready and give the ginger chick black that we like to do on these items. So now for this black little stool, you know, it is painted black. It is you know, upholstered and you know, five or nine, I don't think that is a bad price because actually I will be throwing away the whole top. I don't like to reuse any of the foam. And for 509, you can see how wonky it is that it needs tightened up. For this little side table, this was a 409 and it is just that pressed MDF board and you can see how it has wear and tear on it. Now for this little side table, oh my goodness, this is polyurethane. You can see every brush stroke known to mankind on this. This is, there's not a smooth finish at all to that side table. And then I'm sure you're looking at these candlesticks going, really pop that gold one out, throw them in the booth. No, they still, they have wear, they have unevenness. And like I said, I'm not that kind of reseller. And even for this cute little box, this is just that MDF board, that press board. I just absolutely love the detail, but you could see all the wear on that also. And then I had just come across this black bowl as well. So the first thing I have to do is take the seat off of this bench. And usually when I have thrifted these, they are missing screws. The screws, you know, they're... They are warped, meaning the hole that they are screwed into is warped, not the screw itself. And so that's usually one of the reasons I don't even bother trying to get, you know, take, I don't even need to take this apart um, to reuse that wood. The wood is just too thin for what it is. So out of the items, this is probably the neediest of needing to be re-centered, re-glued, re-tightened. I can tell that somebody tried to just put some glue on it, but as you see, it did not stick. You know, you just have to let, you know, there's not a quick fix to this, you know, some super glue is just not going to hold this bad boy together, especially if somebody is going to sit on it. So I'm just kind of hammering it loose, trying to get that super glue. That's really what it looks like that they used, you know, so I can get these nice and tightened and make sure that I don't need to sand something off. <laughs> See what I said? It is just, if you would have sat on this with anybody with any 
the size, or even my biggest cat, I think, would have taken this little stool down. So I want to make sure that it is good and secure. So I am going to be going around with the tight bond wood glue. This is the best glue for the option for this. And then I'm going to need to clamp it all four sides, all four you know, little brace pieces, side brace pieces need to be re-glued. So this is why I chose to start off with this piece first because I knew that it was going to be the neediest and I knew that it was going to need to let the glue do what the glue does and hold those pieces together. It's not like I could take the whole thing apart and just glue it, you know, because that bottom brace that is glued and it is there nice and tight. So this is this wonderful little glue tool that is rubber. So you kind of, I put glue on there and then I can kind of push it down into the crack as much as I can. And I am trying to hit all four sides, you know, so that I can make sure that this is nice and secure. And then I will just be taking a rag and getting the excess of the glue off. And then once I clamp it, I will do the same thing. Whatever, you know, extra glue will screw it out when I clamp it. And then I will just wipe it off and then just sit it to the side and let it dry. Now I have to say at this point, this is when I realized that, you know what, as my husband, as a woodworker and a furniture flipper, we need to purchase some more clamps because I literally used all six of his longest clamps to do this. And maybe he doesn't use as many clamps as I do. So there's probably two ways you could have fixed this little, um, you know, this gouge that's in the top. You could have filled it in with some wood filler or some spackle or like what I chose to do. I am just going to sand it smooth because I know that this type of, you know, MDF board and the shininess may not take the paint as well as I want it to. So I am just going to sand it smooth. And the same thing with this little box. It is, you know... It's all marred up, it's the MDF board, so to get that shininess for the paint to take well, I'm just going to give it a quick sand. I have the sand orbital sander out anyway, so why not? And then when this with this little box, when I was sanding it, I had kind of seen that mark anyway, you know, when I was showing this product off, that it, piece of it is starting to splinter, so it's not very thick wood, so I don't want to pull that splinter off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it in with the Starbond glue. You know, not only will this adhere that splintered piece, but it also I can use it as a fill-in, you know, and then I can go on with my work because with the accelerator, it only takes it 15 seconds to dry. And then remembering to dip the tip of this quick dry glue in some Vaseline so that the lid doesn't stick on it. Then I can proceed to sand that smooth. Yes, you can use that Starbond glue as a little bit of a filler when you added that accelerator to it, the, the spray dryer. It just makes it nice and smooth. And I have to say that I love all the, the tips that people give me on how to remove stickers off of items. So I'm trying my heat gun and one of my little scraper tools. It's just a hard item because I almost needed a third hand to hold that down or something to clamp it. But we know I was using all the clamps on that little bench. So though it did release the sticky and then I had to use like some glue gun or some rubbing alcohol to get the sticky out, probably not a technique I'll use too much because the heat gun's really hot. And you know, I just like trying all the techniques that people give me in my comments. And now I need to pop that little brass insert out of the one candlestick because there's only one. So I don't want to make it supposed to be a set and I will sell it as a set. And then I thought there was wax inside the one, but it was just the color of the inside. So I didn't need to remove any wax. But since it kind of left a divot, I did take the orbital sander over the top of them a little bit just to make it even. And I have to say, I saved this one for last when it came to sanding. Even though I had to wait for glue to dry on the other one, I knew that I was going to need a 80 grit to take this polyurethane down. There were so many brush strokes on this table. So I'm going to be using a 80 grit to take that polyurethane down. And then once I finally get it to where it's, you know, I feel that I can smooth it out using some 220 because the 80 grit will leave it all raised and not a great texture. And then you want to work up the, the lower the level, the more it will take off, the higher the number, the more it will smooth it out for you. I wish that you could have heard my nails scratching on how much noise this, just the texture that those brush strokes left 
on this table and yep I had to take it all the way down as much as I could so that it was a nice and smooth but well worth its time when you're flipping a furniture and your name is going on it you want it to be quality work so now that I have them all sanded and anything glued and fixed that needed to be fixed, I can finally get on to cleaning these pieces. Just because you sanded them does not mean that they are cleaned and prepped to paint. So our go-to is this crud cutter and it is just a wonderful deglosser, you know, gets any residue, any buildup. No, I did not sand the spindles. That is not a texture you're going to be touching. And I have to say they weren't textured for some reason. So I... You know, I, I, I did them as much as I can. I will be painting over them for the blacks to match, but I wasn't going to. Sometimes when you're taking an orbital sander and trying to, um, you don't really want to take an orbital sander to kind of spindles like this because you'll actually take wood down. And not just paint, not just paint off, you'll actually remove some of the wood and you don't want to do that. And yes, I will be cleaning all of these pieces, all the tables, the candlesticks, yes. And especially this bowl, uh, there was some weird sliminess in the middle of this bowl, which I would have just considered a decorative bowl. So I was a little questioning that. So now I can move on to painting my pieces. You want to make sure after cleaning them with the crud cutter that you let them thoroughly dry before starting to paint. You know, that way your paint will take its best. So can we just take a moment and can I just share our spray room? I am just I blessed beyond measures about being able to be able to spray paint all year long. We have a ventilation system, though it's just a bathroom vent for right now. We might make something stronger um, and fans. And then as you see, we wrapped everything in plastic. I just ran across, you know, shower curtains from the Dollar Tree to, you know, use this and, you know, this turntable area so I can set items on and have them on a board and then spray them all around and then take that item out because it's on a board and bring another board in it's just a wonderful process especially when you're mass producing well not mass producing but you're doing an assembly line of pay spray painting to resell this just makes this round robin game just a game changer i'm just thoroughly blessed so i'll get on to sorry for rambling and then I, we absolutely love this Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in One, and th that really works best for these MDF pieces. I find that it attaches it's it, it attaches well to these pieces because MDF is not really soaking in to these pieces. It's kind of just staying on or sitting on these pieces, but. And I could have painted this um, side table with regular paint, but when I was covering up that old paint job with polyurethane on it, and then really I'm painting everything else with the spray paint so why not and it it does work fine cost efficient since it's not a huge item I would not want to spray paint out of a can with you know a huge item but it will work and then I just wanted to show you that now this bench is good and secure. Anybody can sit on this bench and it will not, you know, all four legs will not fall out from underneath you. So it is nice and secure. So I just have a little bit of sanding and I will get this sprayed up as well. Now remember what I said about this MDF board. It's just kind of sitting right on top of it. It's not really soaked in. So if I would go to distress, you know, it wouldn't probably really distress its best. But for the black pieces anyway, we like to seal the paint in. We're using a top coat and using the polycrylic is our go-to. And what this is, is this for the for the MDF board, it is sealing it in so that that paint is on these items nice and secure. You don't have to worry about the chipping. And then also when we go to distress it, I'm just not sanding it right off. Then if you are new to sanding MDF boards, see how it has that light and dark effect of how I spray painted it. But once I seal this in with the polycrylic that will, and then I sand it, it will be completely fine. I just, you know, if you, this is your first time seeing this, you know, I don't want somebody to get worried like, oh my gosh, this is, piece is ruined. No, really, this is just one of those processes that it will even out at the end. And yes, the polycrylic on black looks blue while it is drying. So I had Chris cut me a new board for that bench. You know, there's no sense of reusing something that is such a thin wood that screws don't even attach to it. 
And so to finish off the bottom of it before I reupholster it, I like to paint it black and that just, you know, that way it doesn't look like just a piece of plywood. And then I just let that dry before getting on to reupholstering it. As if making a new cushion for this bench, I had just used this electric knife and cut the square of the upholstery foam that I kind of had put the wood on and traced a sharpie around. Those electric knives are wonderful for cutting this foam. And then to attach it to the board so that it doesn't shift while you're trying to put the fabric on, I just use some spray glue, spray adhesive, and then I just kind of push it down and that makes it nice so that, that the foam's not shifting around while you're trying to work with it. And then for this um, batting, this batting was a little bit thicker, so I didn't want it to bunch up on the sides. So I cut a little corner squares off, and then this will be, you know, then, then you start pulling it tight on each side. You know, you don't want to make it pucker, but you want to keep this nice and tight to make it a nice cushion. So I do one side, and then I do the other side and cut off any excess. I will say having an electric staple gun does make this process go a little bit faster, but also it does take a, it does slow you up a little bit because I love the foam that I buy from Amazon and it's kind of bouncy, so you kind of have to put your weight on it to get the staple to go in. But this is just the general idea of how I attach the batting and then I cut the excess off, and that's why I painted that bottom. It's the same concept for the drop cloth linen. I cut out the square that I felt that would cover. And then the same thing, I cut a little corner off. I make sure that the corners are going to go, touch all the way over to the side. See how that worked like that. And that way I don't have to worry about bunching and too much puckering. And then I just fold that little edge over and pull it nice and tight. And then, you know, just put my staple and then work on one side and then work on the other and try to make nice little packages kind of tucking it up that's where cutting that excess off really makes it nice and I try to make my corners you know all kind of uniform so this is what the finished product looked like and you know if you take your time it just makes a nice nice seat and if you are new to my channel or you're one of my regular subscribers, you know that I love grain sack stripes. So of course I'm going to put some grain sack stripes on this little seat. I did have a plan on doing a stencil, but our internet was out at the time that I, so I could not use anything to print anything out. So I'm just going over the steps of what I do. And there was this little um, crease that wouldn't iron out on this. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna off-centered my stripes because that's the fun of grain sack stripes. It is the imperfectly imperfect and you can make them any way you want. So I was going to just use that little crease for my first stripe. I use the Apple Barrel in black for most of my times that I stripe, and the Apple Barrel multi-use is, it. at the end of this, it, I will iron it in, and it'll be nice and soft and washable. I So far, I've washed pillowcases, and I've taken um, my upholstery cleaner to like cushions that I have, and so far, it has worked out wonderful. And I kind of do a slidey technique. I found if I try to bounce like you would on a wooden piece, it kind of makes dark and light spots. So what I do is I just kind of slide down where the tape is. So, you know, I have other videos I can link about how I do the striping, you know, there's so many ways to do striping you know you just start off with a center point and then you you know you tape off on each side you make the stripe as the size that you want it to be you want to leave a space in between that's where the middle that you see that little space hung over and so then you just work on from there that's the nice thing about grain sack stripes and it's probably why i love doing them is that you can do them different every time you do them you don't have to use black you can do whatever colors you wanted and so this is just the quick version because, you know, I do have a lot of these um, on my channel and I just kind of just kept going until I was happy with the finished look. So now I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and well, because my have, I have the press, so it's handy to just use that as the iron. And so what this does, the parchment paper is kind of a barrier from the iron and it just, that paint is hard and then when you iron it it's nice and soft and then i seal it in with some scotch guard fabric protector and i sprayed that outside 
Now that that polycrylic is all dry, the nice thing about polycrylic is it really does seal in well and it is dry usually within the hour and only one coat is needed. I mean, for a spray can, a little bit goes a long way. I definitely love how it self levels. And so now I'm on to distressing my black pieces. So I'm taking a piece of a 220 sandpaper and I'm pushing hard on those sharp edges, the edges of what I want some of that natural to show through. I want some of that natural wood to show through. Just, I like the look of a distressed piece. It just brings out the details. Then off over the rest of the piece of the black, I take a fine grit steel wool. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking that shininess off that the polycrylic, even though, you know, it's a satin or a matte, it still to me is a really shiny. And also what I'm doing is that top coat is what the top coat is. It seals in that paint. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up and smoothing out a little bit. So when I go to wax this piece, there's something for the wax to grab onto. If I didn't, you know, do this, it would just kind of be laying on top of it. And then yes, I will be doing the rest of this to all the other pieces. The candlesticks I'm not going to emphasize as much because they were like, you know, a different type of a resin that really would not de-stress. So I'm still just taking that steel wool over it just to take that shiny off. So I, I still want to wax these as well. So now that I have all my black pieces sanded, I like to finish them up and protect that paint and give that paint a little rich look using this Waverly Antiquing Wax. I just absolutely love this stuff. So you wipe it on, you kind of rub it in, you know, that's why you've opened up that polycrylic to be able to accept this wax and then just wipe off any excess. I just absolutely love how it deepens and how it richens up this black. And this is why, even though it was already black, why I repainted the black that we love. These products now look brand new. They don't look used and abused. You know, even this one from Big Lots, just pulling out those details of it. You know, for me, I would be happy if I was even buying these at somebody else's booth. I just absolutely love how they turned out. And yes, you want to be proud of what you do. So even as a furniture flipper of thrifted items, yes, it matters. Your paint job does manage, matter. It's your signature. You want, you want to be very proud of your work. You want people to know that you do good work. So yes, so those few comments of why did you repaint it when it's already painted, it's not the same paint job. That is exactly why we repaint and why we do what we do. It's it's because we love what we do, we love the finished product, and we always want somebody to have a good piece of furniture, a sturdy piece of furniture, and a nice piece of home decor. So what did you think? Did you, did you understand, you know, for those few comments of people like, that is why we redo the items, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not that kind of reseller. I, you know, I want to make the item ours. I want to, you know, our, put our personal touch on it. So I thank you for watching today's video and sure, give me a quick comment of which one was your favorite. Would you have stayed clear of any of them or they weren't worth my time? You know, you know, I, it, when I get an item, I see potential in it. So I always think that they're worth my time. So Anyway, I thank you so much for watching today's video. And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much. You have helped my channel grow. I'm just humbly blessed. And if you're new to my channel and checking out my channel for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button. And as always, don't forget to hit that notification bell of when I've uploaded a new video.